latest property hotline on Magic Bricks now India's first property channel. I'm Fede Souza. Thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to answer tax questions today. So Vinay Singh joins me in the studio. Vinay, it's a pleasure to have you here. Uh, I appreciate you giving us time and answering our questions. I understand that our phone lines are already ringing, but for those of our viewers who've tuned in for the first time, welcome to Magic Bricks Now. This is a new channel. Our phone number is on your screen. So if you have a question to ask us about buying property or about the tax that you have to pay when you buy or sell property, our contact details are on your screen. Feel free to get in touch. Our first caller is uh, already online. Deepankar Chatterjee has called in from Kandivili in Mumbai. Deepankar, good evening. Tell us what your question is. Good evening. Um, in 2009, mm -hmm. I had purchased a uh, three BHK flat yes. in, the, in the outskirts of New Bombay mm -hmm. in a 600 acre plot okay. uh, in an ACZ area. Okay. And this ACZ had a two section one was residential and the other was uh, uh, commercial. commercial. Okay. Uh, resi residential was a uh, non processing zone. And commercial was uh, processing zone without manufacturing. Okay. Now, uh, there was an agreement drawn on a company letterhead, and uh, they verbally promised to deliver by 2012. Now, the construction started very well. Suddenly, in between, uh, construction stopped and the, the builder went into difficulty. Okay. And another uh, builder purchased the property project in 2013. Hmm. And then 2015, October, we got a letter from the new uh, builder that that we have to uh, ask, requesting us to pay 15% on top of the cost of the earlier project. Okay. Uh, project uh, flat cost. Right. So we asked, why are you asking 15%? Uh, so he said, that, look, this new rule has passed, ACZ rule has passed, that... Uh, according to the new rule, being in the SEZ uh, non-processing zone, you can sell your flat or lease your flat only to the people within the SEZ area. Yes. That means we, we don't get a market price of rent or of, uh, flat price. So he said that uh, uh, the earlier builder has enjoyed government tax benefit because of being in the SEZ area. Mm. This we have to pay back to the government then this can be converted into a dual non-processing zone for residential area and then you can sell it to anybody at the market price. And uh, my question is, is this true? And okay. what is this I true and what can you do? That's the Pankar's question, Vinay. Uh, it's a long question, but I think fundamentally he's asking this. There is a developer now who's asking for a 15% premium on the cost that he's already agreed to and paid. Does he need to pay that 15% premium? Have the tax rules for SEZ residential property changed? Uh, not to the best of my knowledge. Mm. I, uh, but we are seeing a lot of this happening. There are uh, many large builders, good names, who are trying the stunt. And, you know, after a few years of delay, instead of trying to compensate the people whose money they've they're been sitting on, asking for they're more actually money. asking for more. So, and there are different uh, reasons given. There are different excuses. So, as far as I can see... If you have already agreed on a particular rate, there is no need to pay anything more. Yes. Uh, if you have an agreement, Actually, you know, then even you should if, if, it. If, if you have an agreement, let's just for argument's sake, the rules say the rules did change and the tax, uh, you know, in this particular case, it's not a rule that impacts the customer. It is a rule that impacts the builder, which in no way at all should be a burden that the customer is expected to pay. So whatever has been listed out in his contract as, as the, uh, you know, as the price is the only thing he should be willing to pay, right? Right, absolutely. Yeah. There is absolutely no need to pay even one rupee more and you should mm. resist it. The reality that we are seeing is that then the builder starts putting various kinds of pressures. So you will have to be prepared to you know fight it collectively with other people who are also in the project yeah. because all of you are going to face the same problem. All right, so Dibankar, tell me this. Are you in contact with other people who have bought from the same developer, the same yes, builder? Uh, yes, uh, everybody is confused actually that some people are thinking of going to consumer court. Mm -hmm. Some people have already paid uh, to the uh, builder, but the uh, builder is saying unless everybody pays, we cannot uh, give it to back to government. So either everybody pays 
or nobody pays. All right, so here's here's our uh, recommendation. This is what Vinay and I recommend that nobody pays and <laughs> that you stand together in your, you know, unite together in your uh, decision to not pay because this is not a tax that the government is levying on you, if at all. First of all, Vinay says he, to the best of his knowledge, he doesn't know if there is such a tax. So it's not your responsibility to pay. You have to stick with what's in your contract. So the builder is not allowed to increase your, uh, you know, the price of your home by 15%. Absolutely not. And maybe getting together, sending him a legal notice or, uh, you know, approaching the consumer court is not a bad idea if you're telling me the pro property is ready, Vinay, which means it's ready for possession. All they need now is for the developer to hand it over. Yes, and uh, definitely they should uh, seek the help of the court because, you know, this kind of thing uh, creates a lot of stress. Hmm. And this is literally blackmail. Everybody pays or nobody pays. I mean, yes, what yes. is the meaning of this? So what I think what the developer is hoping to do here is to get some buyers to put pressure on the rest of them and have everybody pay him. Uh, the banker very clearly, do not pay and make sure that the rest of your customers don't pay because you don't need to. There's no reason why you should be parting with this extra money. If you need any more help, feel free to get back in touch with us. Deepak is on the phone line from Pune. Deepak, good evening. What's your question? Yeah. Uh, Madam, first, congratulations for the best channel. I'm very, very much happy with the content in the channel. I'm glad. My, Thank uh, you. My very, uh, my very query is with reference to uh, this uh, TDS from June 30. Yes. What has happened? I have purchased a flat in Utica hmm. and the agreement dated is uh, February 11. Okay. Out of the total cost of 75 lakhs, I have paid 68 lakh, 67 lakh rupees prior to this date, June okay. 30. Okay. And uh, in the month of July or August, I have paid remaining 7 8 lakhs. Hmm. Now, in your program, Dated, uh, first was, uh, this date was uh, 8th May 16, when Kanbar was there, Samir Kanbar. Yes. He has said the tax is to be paid, but there is a fighting chance that you can argue that the agreement is prior and you can take a chance. It is not a successful thing, but there is a chance that you can succeed if you appeal on that line. Hmm. The same query was by some other customer on 16th June. Yes. At that time, again, Kanbar was there, but that time he said, uh, you, are, you will have to pay the TDS by, by talking to uh, builder. So, uh, let, me so, just, let me just clear or clarify this. If I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, it is the amount that gets transferred. So if he's paid 7 or 8 lakh rupees after that date of June 2013, then the TDS will have to be deducted on that 7, 8 lakh rupees. Yes, that's it. Whole... 7 lakhs and your TDS is 7,000 rupees. Mm. So, and you which have you to can pay technically, that, yes. Yeah, which you can technically knock off against what you're paying your, uh, your, what you're paying your developer. Yes, it's right? a withholding tax. So it's you're paying tax, less. Yeah, uh, yeah. You're just doing a postman's job. You're collecting it from the builder and paying it to the government. And you are bound to pay it, uh, I mean, whatever installment you pay on or after 1st of June 2013, you have to deduct. So I don't think there's any, uh, you know, doubt about this, this kind of a TDS uh, deduction there. You know, let me make this very clear to our viewers. A lot of times our viewers assume that the TDS is an extra tax that you are paying as a buyer. You're not paying that as a buyer. What this tax effectively does is it helps the government track all of the sales that have happened and the price at which these sales have happened. So effectively, if you are paying, so let's assume Vinay has sold me an apartment, I have to pay him 100 rupees. I'm going to deduct 1% out of that 100 rupees and pay it to the government, which actually he should have paid. And I'm going to deduct that from what I'm going to pay him. So it's not an extra 1% that you are having to pay. You're just deducting it from the money that you're paying your developer. So if you've paid anything, if there's an installment like in this case of 7 or 8 lakh rupees that you've paid after the date, of June 2013, then that's the 1% that you have to deduct. Do you have any more questions for us, Deepak? No, no, no. This is all only. There is no argument in this. There is no chance. That's what you are saying? Yes, there I, is yeah. absolutely no argument here. There's, there's no <laughs> argument here. But remember to deduct that amount from uh, from the developer when you are paying him that 7 or 8 lakh rupees, uh, Deepak. There's an email that's come in from Parag Jain. He tells us he sold land that he owned for 11 years. He wants to know if he can avoid paying capital gains tax in any way. Well, that's that's a regular question on this show. Everybody wants to avoid <laughs> paying capital gains tax. We don't know the nature of this land, unfortunately, whether it's agricultural or yeah. non-agricultural. He hasn't told us. What would you recommend? Uh, well, let's let's assume that it is uh, taxable and uh, it's not agricultural uh, mm. land in that sense. So you have various options. You can uh, buy a residential property with it and uh, therefore you can save tax. Or you could invest in uh, the 54 EC bonds up to 50 lakhs and you could mm. save tax fully or partially depending on what is the volume of your gains. 
uh, if it's agricultural land, then again you could you know take the help of Section 54B mm. and invest it in another agricultural land and save capital gains tax. So these are the various options before you. Mm. You can take a call depending on what kind of land it is. So just to make this clear, if I have agricultural land that I have sold at a profit, I just have to reinvest that profit in another piece of agricultural land in, yes, order, to, in yes. order to avoid the tax. Yes. Sorry. Um, and if, if it's non-agricultural land, it either needs to be reinvested in residential property or in the tax-saving bonds. Absolutely. All right. There's another question. This one's really interesting, Vinay. Uh, Sanjeev Keskar has posted this question on our website. Our website, by the way, is mbnow.in. Uh, you'll find a copy of this show and several of our other videos on the website. You can also give us questions. Now, this question has come in from Sanjeev. He said that his building uh, is currently undergoing redevelopment. Now, the developer asked all of the members if they want to purchase extra carpet area over and above the carpet area that they were going to get in the, in the scheme anyway. Sanjeev wants to purchase this extra area. He'll be charged separately for it. But for the next two years, he will also receive 7 lakh rupees as rent from the developer. Now, he's hoping to offset that rent for the amount that he has to pay for the extra carpet area. He wants to know, will he have to pay income tax if he reinvests that entire rent on uh, the extra carpet area? What would you, uh, what would you say? The, does he have to pay, first of all, uh, let's break this up into pieces so that all of our viewers can you know, benefit from the advice. So if I have a building going into redevelopment and I'm receiving rent from the developer, do I have to pay tax on that rent? Well, uh, the rent that you receive, if you are going to utilize it, because there's going to be a you know couple of years time, uh, you'll be staying outside till the entire building is reconstructed. Mm -hmm. So if at that point in time, the rent that you are receiving, you are utilizing it to pay rent. To the extent that you have utilized it, clearly you have a damn good case to say that uh, you're not, that's not taxable. Right. But if you have not paid rent or mm -hmm. the rent that you paid is less than what you have received, then that differential amount, uh, at least the department is very clear that it's taxable. And I would be inclined to go with that view that you will have to end up paying tax on that. All right, so if you haven't utilized the rent, if you're not using it to actually pay rent and you can't show a rent receipt and uh, the document of uh, registering the rent, if I'm not mistaken, Vinay, then you will actually have to pay tax. So, Absolutely. Okay, let's take the next quest, the next part of this question where he's saying that he wants to buy that additional carpet area that's available to him and he wants to use this rental amount for that carpet area. Does that in any way change the treatment from a taxation no, no, point No, it does view? not change anything because that is an income, I mean a reimbursement actually that we are looking at. And uh, this is a capital transaction, so there's no way that you can say that I will not pay rent but use it to buy a flat and uh, save tax in any manner. That's not right. possible. No hope there at all to save tax, <laughs> but uh, good luck with your new apartment and uh, we hope you enjoy your new home. Let's take one more question that's come in on email. Ranjit Bhatt has written in, he's booked a flat, he tells us, with Nagarjuna Builder uh, in uh, Kochi. The flat value is less than one crore rupees and it's sized below 2,000 square feet. Now, is the service tax rate three and a half percent? Also, since Nagarjuna has registered the property in Hyderabad, can they claim CST and not KVAT? Uh, they claim the compounding tax of 7% on the full value of the flat, including service tax. Is that correct? How much VAT should be charged? All right. Again, I'm going to take this step by step. Here's an apartment that's being bought in Kochi. Um, so it's one crore. It's uh, less than one crore rupees. It's less than 2,000 square feet. What service tax are we talking about here? Well, then the service tax would become chargeable at 25%, mm -hmm. uh, not 30%. And 25% of 15%, uh, so which is 3.75%. That is the service tax that you would end up paying on this. All right, service tax of 3.75% is what you will pay on this particular apartment. Now, this complicated thing that he sent us, saying that, uh, you know, they've told us that they've registered it in Hyderabad. A, is that allowed? And then what sort of VAT should they be charging uh, on an apartment like this? Can I you? think to the best of my knowledge, the VAT rate there would be about 12.5% on the cost of construction. So now it is very difficult for us to say exactly what that amount will mm -hmm. be because uh, we don't know what the cost of construction is. At the same time, uh, there is a 1% labor welfare charge also that you would uh, end up paying there. So my advice to you is that it's very clear what is the amount of service tax. It's uh, uh, You'll have to work out what the VAT comes to and you'll have to work out what that 1% uh, labor welfare board charges work out to. So you could uh, ask the builder to share with you exactly what is the cost of construction and how they have computed the amount that they want you to pay. And uh, you can just uh, do some verification at your end to mm -hmm. see that what you're paying is correct.
All right, do some verification. Next email, Vinay, comes in from Peter Mark, and this is an extremely interesting question. I'm going to take it again step by step because it's so complicated. Now, Peter bought a flat in 1990, which he transferred as a gift to his brother in 2000. He, since he moved to the U.S. Now, he's come back to India in 2005, and the brother transferred the gift, uh, transferred the flat back to him as a gift. Peter is now returning to the U.S., and he wants to transfer the flat back to his brother as a gift again. He has a three-part question. I have a three-part question about this entire email. But we'll take this, uh, we'll take this one by one. Will his brother get indexation benefit from 1990 when he bought the flat if he sells it now? Vinay? Uh, well, no, not from 1990, but from 2005, yes. All right, so he can index from 2005. Uh, the next question, he says, to avail of tax benefits, should Peter's brother hold the flat for another three years or can he sell it immediately? Now, since you're, you're calculating from 2005, will he have to hold for another three years? No, he doesn't have to because uh, in case of a gift, hmm. the cost to the previous owner as well as the holding period of the previous owner uh, can added? be taken as, yeah, okay. it's added to your uh, holding But that's again something cost. you have to, of course, your attempt to claim while you're, while you're actually paying your tax, right? You have to make that argument or is it a given? No, no, it's a given. It's a given, it's a given. Right. no problem. He also wants to know if the gifted flat is his brother's second home because his brother already owns a home and the brother sells the gifted home the same year as it's being transferred to him. Is he, is he eligible for capital gains benefits? Or will he have to rent it out for a year before selling it? No, there's absolutely no problem because, as I said, the cost also uh, of the previous owner is his and your holding period is also his. So it's a long-term asset in his hands. Mm. He can sell it the very next day, no problem. You know, just for the benefit of all of our viewers, um, a lot of this happens, obviously. Property moved from one family member to the other as a gift. Now, uh, what sort of tax do I have to pay in this case? We know that from an income tax point of view, gifts between blood relatives are completely tax-free. But there's also stamp duty, registration, things like that. Can I, so here's the question. Can I transfer property to a family member as a gift and not have to do stamp duty and registration? Well, at least in the state of Maharashtra, mm. uh, you will have various benefits depending on what or who that relative is. For example, if you are uh, uh, giving a gift to your parent, Hmm. then you you don't have a blanket exemption, but you would end up paying 2% as a stamp duty. But okay. if you're giving it to, say, your child, then you would be virtually completely exempt. You can get away by paying just 200 rupees stamp duty. Okay. Registration, however, is a must for all gifts, so there is mm -hmm. no escaping mm -hmm. that. Fortunately for you, we have a cap. The maximum registration fee in Maharashtra is just 30,000 rupees, right. uh, regardless of the value of the flat so or property. So I think uh, that's that's fairly good for you to do. All right, so it depends case to case, uh, but that's a very interesting uh, point there of moving uh, property from one family member to another. Sanjay has called us from Pune. Sanjay, what's your question? Hi, uh, I booked a flat in 2010. Okay. And uh, 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 got possession of right now. Uh, All right. So I wanted to ask you about service tax. Uh, mm -hmm. 2010, there was no service tax, whether it's in the flat or my business. Okay. And the service tax came at a latter date. Okay. So do I need to uh, pay service tax only after when service tax kicked in or for the full amount? Because I'd, I'd already paid the builder, um, say, 40% of the amount before the date of service tax kicking in. And after service tax uh, actually came into effect, uh, the rest of the payment was given. So should I be taxed on the whole amount or only mm. after service tax was effective? Vinay? And uh, what percentage of service tax? Uh, well, the, the service tax, as we, uh, as you said, if you have paid 40% earlier, then you don't need to pay on that. But the later installments, once service tax has kicked in, on those installments, you will have to pay service tax. Now, you have a, a rebate uh, depending on the size and the value of the flat. So now we, uh, depends on what is the value of the flat, what is the size of your flat. So if, for example, if it's more than a crore and it's more than 2,000 square feet, then you will end up paying on 30% of the value. So depending on when you paid the installments, mm. what was the rate at that point in time, your uh, the amount of service tax that you pay will vary slightly. All right. Uh, I, want to, I want to quickly take in as many questions as we can because we're running out of time. Mukund has also called in from Mumbai. Mukund, if you can hear me, tell me what your question yeah. is. Yeah, my query is, I had uh, inherited the property from my father. Okay. It was a 1971 construction and mm. it was inherited in the year 2009 in mm. the name of my wife and myself okay. and then we got into redevelopment and in 2013 we made a 
uh, two different properties, uh, two different name uh, properties. My wife and myself, we did a gifted and separated the two properties which were jointly held with by us. Okay. And then now we have got redevelopment and we got three properties. So okay. in that case, uh, my query was, what will be the capital gain tax as the gift deed was done in the year 2013? And we have got in 2016 this property. And if I sell one property and buy a bigger one property in the name of my wife, so what, will, the, will there be any capital gain tax and to what effect? Really? Well, if there is a gift, the, as uh, we have already discussed on this show, the earlier holding period also comes uh, belongs to you. So, if it's a long-term capital asset, then of course there is, uh, you know, you are entitled to benefit. So, if you are selling something or you are reinvesting, then there is no capital gains. Mm. Um, uh, I'm sorry, what was the second uh, question that you had? He said that if he were to sell one of those properties and buy something larger in his wife's name or in his name, then what sort of... Uh, well, again, there's no... It's just residential to residential, yeah, right? It's residential so it's to residential. So, Section 54 will uh, give you the exemption. Mm. Of course, provided it's a long-term asset, which it is now. So I don't think there is a problem uh, in, if you want to buy another larger residential house. Whatever capital gains you have will obviously be absorbed by the new property. So there's no question of taxation there. There's no question of taxation there. All right, I'm going to take one more question. Pankaj has sent in a question on Twitter. He wants to know if he should pay capital gains tax uh, if he sells residential property and buys commercial property. Now, obviously, if you sell residential, buy commercial, then you will have to pay capital gains tax, right, Vinay? Absolutely, because all the exemptions that are there in the Act are for when you are buying a house. So, whether you look at Section 54 or 54F, both give you exemptions from sale of residential or other than residential assets, but provided you buy a residential property. True. So, in this particular case, there is no exemption available. You would end up paying capital gains uh, tax on the sale of your house. So, maybe you should look at other options like those bonds. You know, I have a question for you about the mm -hmm. bonds. Now, we keep saying, uh, you know, we can avoid, you, either you buy residential property, which tends to be a really heavy thing to do because, especially for a senior citizen, for example, investing again in residential property, then managing the rental income, which is fairly low, then actually managing that residential property is quite painful. If they use the bonds instead, the rent, the, uh, you know, the actual interest that comes out of that bond is very weak. Yes. Um, it, it doesn't really add up too much. Do, would you really recommend it? Well, uh, the way you look at it is that you're saving the tax and in mm -hmm. three years, the money is free for you to do as you like at the end of that three-year period. So, it's more of that rather than, you know, looking at the income that the bonds are generating. That will be typically 6% or so. Mm -hmm. So, it's not much really. Do I have much, to pay really. tax, income tax on the income that the bond is generating? Yes, yes you do. All right. It so, is taxable. So, it's a net of tax. <laughs> net of tax, that 6% comes down to, you know, what, 4%? 4%, 4.2. 4, 4.2% 4, 4. Yeah, depending on your tax bracket. Uh, if, if you're a retired senior citizen, then that, you know, it comes down marginally so. But it's really quite an insignificant interest rate. And um, if, if I were you, as, uh, you know, as someone who sold a home, I'd also worry about beating inflation for those three years because you're so far lower than inflation. So invest some money, of course, into equity uh, if, if you can, if buying another home is not an option. Vinay, uh, I think we've run out of time on the show. Thank you so much for spending time with us. It's been a really interesting and a, a really interesting discussion on tax, uh, which, which is difficult to make interesting, but you've managed to do that for us. Vinay is, of course, a regular on this show, so if you have a question for him, you know how to get in touch with us. Our contact details are on your screen. Stay with Magic Bricks now. You can watch live TV on our website, mbnow.in. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash magicbricksnow. And don't forget to click the like button. You can also follow us on Twitter at magicbricksnow. To stay updated with all our programming, hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel by logging on to youtube.com forward slash magicbricksnow.